Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by saying random Hawaiian street names when your haole friend on the continent asks if you can speak Hawaiian. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and Kalani Anaole Wailai, Kamehameha, Kunia, Kalakawa, Kanoe Lehua Avenue. We got a great episode for you today, but before we introduce our guests, I want to remind you to check out our Patreon if you want to support our podcast. Any contribution you make helps us and allows us to continue doing what we love. And make sure you check out Hawaiiverse.com if you love supporting local businesses. Okay, let's introduce our guest. Our guest today is a very talented musician from the island of Oahu. He is a singer, songwriter, music teacher, mentor, and advocate for the Hawaiian language. This performer has been making music his whole life and has been playing the ukulele and piano since he was just a kid. In 2009, he joined his friends to form an all-star band of local musicians called The Green. You might have heard of them. He can be found on stage with The Green, Paula Funga, Kimie, and many other well-known musicians playing bass, keyboards, and singing harmonies. He is the all-star himself. His name is Brad B. Dub Watanabe. <laughs> Hello, Brad. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, my ka ino, mahalo i ke uh, kono ana mai. Ah, how oli wau i ka iki ana ya. Oi, mahalo no kaila ana mai ki ala. Eh, no ka. How oli? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Brad learned Hawaiian in the last four years, um, and he's actually really, really good. Like it's very impressive. So in this episode, we we want to incorporate our Olelo Hawaii. You know, Hawaiian's my lang- my first language. I grew up speaking it, and I um, still speak it to this day. And Brad is just a big advocate uh, for Hawaiian language. All your posts on Instagram is in Hawaiian, right? Mm-hmm. It's super cool. So maybe for the first, you know, ten to fifteen minutes, the the beginning of this podcast, I think it would be cool if we, you know, Olelo Hawaii, we do it in our native language. And, you know, for the listeners, you obviously might not <laughs> understand <laughs> what we're saying. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put subtitles on the this part, the part that we speak Hawaiian, on YouTube and Spotify. So make sure you head over there to check it out. Um, and for those who are learning, maybe this is a good opportunity for you all to, you know, get used to hearing Hawaiian language, hearing it spoken in a conversation. So... Yeah, let's do it. It's my podcast. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> if you guys don't like it, then you can listen to another episode. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because uh, you don't. I don't really get too many opportunities to speak wine on a podcast, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I have a lot to get into, but before we get into everything, as always, gotta know the classic Hawaii questions. No hair, my oi. Well, puka kula oi, my kikula hair. Where you grad? And Pehea Kova Kamali. What was it like growing up? I no Kailua mai au. Ua hele wau i ke kula o Ponohau. A ka aale wau i Puka. Pehea ka nina o e kua. Pehea Kova Kamali. Oh, ua mai ka ino. Ma ka uwa Kamali i ua hoi hoi loa wau i ka hokani pila. No no o au i ka piano e kolumaka iki au ua uh, hele mako i ke kahi hale aina mau i kiki au i ke wau i ke kahi wahi ne himeni ana ho kani ana i ka ukulele a uh, ua hoi hoi lo wau mm. uh, o pii kela i ini loko o yeah. e a uh, ua noi aku wau i ko u po e mako i na hiki au ke ao a ua ai ai la la ua uh, uh, pela no wau i ho maka i a mai kela manawa ai ke manawa ano he me ho kani pila wa ala la mai ka ilo ai ale pono e no ono ma ko va ho kani hana vale ke ka himana mai ka ai o ma ka ho kani ukulele o le ka ho kani piano ah i ke yomo la o ka ukulele pa ha o le ka ka pila nui ale ka a uh, keki ka ke kai mm. e puni lo wa ika uh, ke kiho alu ki ho oh ai e, oh o, nani lo ka la e o yo no mm-hmm. ma ma ko va ma puna ho uh, mm-hmm. ma ma ko va kamuli a uh, wo hoi hoi oi a uh, ina hauki a o le ka ho o ka mele vale no mm wo ano hoi hoi no ka mea u nui na ho o u i i hana i kala mo mea a ka no ua a ale o ko kanipila 
kela ma me a ku pa a vale o e ma ka hoka ni pila a ho ma a ma anu ya ki ma na va he na ka lo ya o e ma ka hoka ni pila ana ka hi meni ke kai wa hi meni oi e a ma mu a wa hi meni nu i wa ke mo la a hi meni wa i na me le hawaii ke kai ma na wa a hi meni wa i na a na leo ku ku launa pa ka hu olalo na harmonies Okay, okay. Uh, eh. It will well, well, nana kai mau video ma YouTube. Mm. Uh, me oe a me uh, Kuana Torres. Oh, ai. Uh, well, uh, uh, ah, ne o oloi ka ke, ke kiho alu a wahi meni eh. ne oe. Oh, uh, ai. Ah, well, imi voi kai mau video e ai a wahi ke voi kai mau mele. Ko, ko um, kau mau mele. Pono i. Oh, oka wa kai ko. Ma, yeah, ma b dub. <laughs> eh. <laughs> ai. Uh, ke kai mau manawa noi ia wau e hi meni mm. kela po e mele a ka o ka ka mea oia i o ka mea Māori ua poina wau i ka nui o la <laughs> kela po e mele uh. a ka ale ale mau ko e poina ana no ka mea aia mau ka puna e wele <laughs> aia mau YouTube <laughs> e yeah, e mau ana ke la mau mele <laughs> <laughs> a ui ke wau ki kai viki o um, me o o o e me ka lawoho lo ihi o oh, ai <laughs> o you know lo ke ha wo o ki o e ka lawoho a u a vela a e ano pa ki ki a uh, ka malama i ana o ke la ano ke la ano lawoho a mm-hmm. uh, no ka me a hua ka i pini pini vao a uh, ano lai la uh, ina e noho ana ma ke ka o hua mm-hmm. no ka ho ka i mahi na pa e ano ano pa ki ki ano nui ka hana pa no e holo e ma ma la ma me ka he ka ho a vela vela ka a i i hope o ka a i no me lo ka um ka lo holo i hi a u mo mo oh yeah um ni me lo okay ka ma ma ki ki aku ne aka wo ma ke ma ke vo i ka a i ka lo holo i hi aka ale vo i ma ke ma ke i ka ano maintenance ka pa no ka pa no e um um uh pono e a uh, haka hula lo e uh, naki naki i, oh, I luna o ko upo o e e e ka me ho vela vela lo <laughs> a pani o ina hauki no laila eh, oh. holo a uh, oh. ale a uh, ale vo i maki maki ke la <laughs> a ka ka lo holo i wo maki maki mm e no laila no laila pe he o e i ho o maki i ka a o ana i ka le lo hova i a u ho maka wo me ka helu helu ana i na puke a o o la roho wai i a la me ka lei ha heo a o ya ka puke mua u i helu helu ai a a laila u a u ano po mai ka i wau i ka launa na me na kanaka o la roho wai i ma ke la manawa a ka mea mua o ya no o ho o manawa nui a po he mea ho kani a pila o ya he pu kani a aka mai lo o ya ika hokani piano hokani piano o ya ma mele manaka no ka house band mm. um o la no va me ya o ha i va ya ya o ka o ne va ika o la lo va i aka o pa ki ki no a ha i mai lo o ya o hi ki o ke ko ku ya o a a la lo o ho ma ka o ya e hele mai ko ha le i ka me ke yo pule a ko ku mai ya u a me kala puke o kale ha heo a no a en u nui kono koku ana mai ya u alai la maha pe u a hele wo ike kai mo papa ma anu enu e a he papa no na makua a no ke kai ulu malila a wo manuahi a no no u emilo a umi kala pa ha no elu mahina e meiki aka a ali nui na mea ho a ui a oi ma kela ma papa a lai la u ike wa i a ke kai ma viki o ma ig o ke kai kumu o ka eo aizan a a u a o oi a me kai ma la au li li i a ka pa i a kela ano kai la o ke ala ke ala leo pa ke kai ma la au la au he he mau la au li li a ho hana ia na la au a he me la he mau hu o lelo a o le he mau he mau me a a le vo i ke mo i ke la e ho i ho i lo he mo i ke la e ho i ho i a a o ia maka o lelo ha vai a valeno me ke la mau la au 
a no laila ua komo wau i kona papa a ua mai ka ilo a ua nui na mea hou a ui a o ai a, a laila ua lilo o ia i ho aloha mm. a, a laila um, ua a, ua pili lo o ia pili lo o ia me uh, kapo e nii hau ke kahi mm. a, ma o kela pili na me ia ua launa pū wau me kapo e nii hau a no no wau ma kela manawa ua a, nui kawalau ana mm. au o o ia paha kama nawa i i vali ka o lalo mm. yeah. oh, ke ke ki awe ke vali ke la o lalo me uh, ke mai ka ilo ka puana hawaii mm. a ke vali na o hua lalo um, mai ka o um, ka a lalo eh. nani loa ka o lalo <laughs> ka o lalo ni i hau ka o lalo o, o na po e ma o ka, ka o lalo hawaii maoli mm. ke lo a lako i ka leo hawaii Oh, Nani loa, ui loa ka ke la leo e. yeah. Ke la ke kai mea ale loa Ale loa oh. um, ma, i kia mau la oh, e. Ea ua nalo vale ke la leo Hawaii A ke, ke, ke kai mau po e Eli ke mea, oi, ano, mai, mai kai ko uh, ko leo Hawaii oh. A ka eli ke mea ke la kanaka Maluhia State oh, Ka ala Uf. Nani loa Nani e. loa, ya, yeah. e. ano lili No, <laughs> ale a No, no, no Valau oe like me ko mau hoa vala au pa a oe pa ke kumu e mm-hmm. no no wa o, o maruhia ho lohe nui oe i na lipine mm-hmm. o na kupuna mm-hmm. a ano hana hana kope oe e mm-hmm. oe no yeah te la no ka ka o lelo e yeah all right so that 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 was so cool to be able to speak <laughs> Hawaiian on the podcast and basically if you didn't if you're still listening and you didn't check out the subtitles <laughs> we were just talking about where he's from, where he grad, um, how he got into um, playing uh, instruments, ukulele and piano, and um, how he how he started learning Hawaiian. And um, basically, it's just you know he he started reading a book and he uh, started to find teachers. He had a, a friend that, uh, or I guess a teacher that became a friend mm-hmm. that started to teach him, and he just surrounded himself with you know people who spoke the language. And I think that's the most important part in speaking languages or learning anything, right? If you want to be a good musician, surround yourself by musicians. You want to be good at Spanish, you know, t- go around Spanish speakers, immerse yourself. Right. Um, and th- that's why, you know, like uh, Hawaiian immersion schools are so key to people learning Hawaiian because you're immersed in Hawaiian. It's everywhere, you know. So I, right. I was at an advantage where I grew yeah. up speaking Hawaiian. I went to Hawaiian immersion school. Hawaiian was everywhere for me. That was one of the mm. things I realized while I was learning, though, you know, is like you were lucky because you were a kid at that time. But for someone like me later in life, there was nowhere to really go, you know, like if I wanted to learn Japanese and be just surrounded by the language, I could go to Japan. But mm-hmm. here in Hawaii, it's like we don't we don't really have that. You know, there are communities, definitely. Mm-hmm. But for like an outsider, maybe or somebody who doesn't know all those people, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, that's there's nowhere to go and that was really like um sad to me when i realized that and Mm -hmm. um you know and uh that was i think why i tried to you know make all of these connections and meet um all of these speakers and you know Mm. how did you make these connections like where did you find these people um i think i was kind of lucky in that um aspect because of being a musician and kind of being out there already, it was um, a little easier maybe to just like, you know, um, message a fellow musician on mm-hmm. Instagram or something like that. And, you know, be able to already have that connection of being like a, a musician or something. And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, having that common ground, I think it was easier for me to get my foot in the door and meet people and ask questions mm-hmm. and, you know, um, and I think that was a big part of it too, is just like asking questions and asking um, yeah. for help, you know. Yes, definitely. And just trying. I mm-hmm. I say oka hua oka me anui, just hey. trying. Just that's all you have to do with anything in life. You know, just try. If you fail, you fail, but you just get better from right. that failure, you know. <laughs> and especially with language, you know, it's a, it's so intimidating, especially if you know you're doing it on your own or you're trying mm. to compare yourself to other people who are better than you. 
It's like you kind of feel inadequate at sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, so definitely. You just gotta go for it. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that's been a big thing too that I've of stories that I've heard is you know people learning Hawaiian and then being so afraid to speak because they just get corrected by the mm -hmm. people around them, you know. And um, I think I was really lucky that I didn't really have that, you know. Um, Kael wasn't really like that, and um, neither were the the Niihauans. They just, you know, I think um, Mama Lolena is kind of, you know, she would say that, um, Valao vale, mm -hmm. you know, my hopo speak, hopo. Yeah. yeah, because I think once you get to a certain point, you'll kind of know what somebody's trying to say, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I think they'll pick up on, you know, grammar and that kind of stuff by listening to you speak, and mm -hmm. so... You know, there's no need to really like put them down or like, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. Well, when you're as good as Brad at speaking Hawaiian, no. <laughs> there's no need to correct them. So <laughs> it's easy when you make no mistakes. <laughs> oh, no. I still ask questions, you know, of like how to say things. Yeah. And, I mean, same, same yeah. with me. I just asked you before this, like, how do you say episode and podcast in Hawaiian? You know, because I was just telling you when I grew up, I mean, there wasn't, it was still like the, it was the second decade of, you know, Hawaiian, the Hawaiian ran, um, language movement mm. with the Hawaiian Emerging Schools. Oh, okay. So there wasn't that many words out there. I mean, even mm. when they first brought Hawaiian, Hawaiian language back and they started incorporating it into the school system, there was a lot of words that just didn't exist in Hawaiian. So, you know, right. Hila and kum, um, kum Kamana, all of them, mm. they just had to get together. They just grabbed the hui together and they just created new words for wor for words that just didn't exist in Hawaiian. Until right. this day, they're still making new words, you know, like yeah. uh, social media, I, I learned like kulele paho, mm. that's a cool one. Um, there's a word for podcast that we, we can't remember, but <laughs> it, it's it's cool seeing all these new words come up. I mean, even like uh, Instagram, yeah, mm -hmm. kiiviki, kiivave. Uh, and it's, uh, it's so interesting because in that sense, I feel a little like I'm behind. Mm. Even though I, I've been speaking my whole life, because when I hear these new words, I'm just like, oh, wow, oh, <laughs> what what does that even mean? Like, is that? And then uh, I kind of, I got to think like, oh, did I learn that in school? <laughs> yeah. Did I learn that growing up? Or is that just a new thing? Like, um, you know how people respond like, eh, eh. Mm, right. I, I don't remember anybody doing that growing up. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know if it's just, I just don't remember oh. or it's it's like a newer thing. I I don't know. Or maybe it's an older thing that people started to mm. incorporate in these modern times. Right. Yeah. yeah, maybe like a almost like a dialect or something yeah. too. Because we yeah. just say I, I or, or okay. We use English like okay. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kinda just like a what what we're used to. But like you said, right. you you speak like how the people that were around you. Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So why did you wanna learn Hawaiian? Um are are you Hawaiian? No, I'm full Japanese. Full Japanese. Um, wow. I'm third generation here yeah. in Hawaii. And you a little Kepani? Nope. That's so <laughs> funny. You didn't speak Japanese, but you, you learned Hawaiian. I actually, um, in I took Japanese in high school. Mm -hmm. I think, I remember like wanting to take Olelo Hawaii, but I think um, my parents wanted me to take, my parents wanted me to take um, Olelo Kepani. Yeah. And um, so I took that. Uh I wanted to learn because, well, uh, Mele Hawaii is like my favorite from when I was little. Um, that's like always been my favorite kind of music. And I went to this concert. It was a Napalapalai's Christmas concert. They had, they were doing a reunion mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, I, I used to love them. You know, mm -hmm. I want to go. So I went and I'm listening to all these songs and I'm just like loving it. And it just hit me I was like oh I don't even know what this song's about but I love it mm. and you know it was it was at that moment I was like oh maybe I should like try and learn this language and so I bought that book Kaleha Hell, and um yeah I just started learning yeah and you learn pretty quickly for somebody who has only been speaking for four years the fluency in which you speak is very impressive oh mahalo. yeah I'm just like because you know you can you can gauge people's levels pretty quickly mm. I feel like um just like see if I was just talking to Jordan off um, right before this it's like how how like you can tell if somebody's good or not because you know some people try to pretend like they're better than they are some people you know the good people are always more ha ha right always more <laughs> humble mm. right they don't they don't have to be like 
I speak Hawaiian, you know. They don't oh, have to yeah. shout it off off the <laughs> rooftop. But yeah, just um from yeah, from the first time we, we, we spoke, I was like, Oh yeah, he's good, like if the comprehension, listening, respond everything mm. was just like how <laughs> how did you like get to that level so quickly? I mean, yeah, you were just surrounded by everybody, but did you practice at home by yourself? Like writing because like yeah. we, we don't really write you're not in school right you don't need mm-hmm. to write right like um and you write all your captions in instagram mm. so is it just like you just really want it and like 24 7 you're just trying to think in hawaiian do everything in hawaiian yeah it's a secret it was it, i honestly think it was that like first year or first two years maybe it was like i was obsessed with it honestly mm. I, after i read that book i went out and bought the other books that um teach uh, Hawaiian. I I started downloading um, like the children's books. Like mm-hmm. they have free PDFs of that on Urukao. I think started reading those because I was like, oh, maybe this would be easy, you know. And um, I just you know tried to find people that spoke, and I would um, try to text them. And the interesting thing about that time was I wasn't talking too much. It wasn't until I I started hanging out with Kael and. Um, Mama Lolena and Auntie Pua that I really was like comfortable talking mm. and um, I think that was after my first year but um, uh, I just literally was just did everything I could you mm. know I would listen to the old Kaleo Hawaii um, uh, recordings and um, try to find stuff on YouTube but Honestly, even within that short time period, like until now, there's way more things like on social media Mm -hmm. and on the internet now that like I wish I had when (laughs) I was learning. Yeah. um, Yeah. And there's going to be more in the Mm -hmm. future. You know, it's just it's it's growing so much. The coolest thing is when I left Hawaiian Immersion my junior year of high school, that was back in 2020, uh, 2010. Mm. We had about 100 students from kindergarten to 12th grade. And then when I came back from my Peace Corps service in Madagascar in 2019, uh, my little brother was going to be a senior in 2020 at the same Hawaiian immersion school. And there was about 500 kids from kindergarten to wow. 12th grade. There's a bunch of new Hawaiian immersion schools. Um, even at uh, that, the school that I went to, they had to like build new uh, trailer or new uh, buildings just to fit everybody. Yeah. So it's just so cool to see the, the growth of that. And hear mm-hmm. people more and more people that speak Hawaiian these days because right. yeah when I when I grew up it wasn't it was not very common it wasn't very normalized I would mm-hmm. be my dad would speak to us in the grocery stores out in public in Hawaiian and I'd be embarrassed to respond because oh. I didn't want to you know I didn't want people to to like to see us it just felt mm-hmm. weird because everyone else is speaking English right Right. But now it's like, it's a cool thing, right? To speak Hawaiian. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like when I'm out, out in public with my brother or my, my dad, I speak Hawaiian very proudly, mm. right? Like I hope people hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to flex this all over. But, but it wasn't like that. Oh, yeah. Before. <clears throat> That's so interesting. Yeah. It's nice to see that growth and hear about it, you know, and can only imagine in the next 10 years what it's going to be like. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, okay, so I want to talk more about the Hawaiian language, and you know, uh, it's a it's a very important topic and something I love talking about. But I do I do want to know about your the musical side and hmm. you know how you how you started your career in music and how you got connected with the Green. Oh, okay. Um, well, right after high school, um, I was really lucky, and I got to um, play with the band Ukla the Mock. Mm-hmm. And um, so I started playing with them as their keyboardist. Um, and I played with them for about five years. Um, and it was really cool because they were my, my favorite band growing up. And so yeah. I feel like I really lucked That's out. That's so cool. You just uh, reached out to them? Um, I was actually working at this guitar store, Dan's Guitars, and their bass player came in with uh, his amp. His amp was broken. And I was like, oh, you can use my amp because like his was going to take a, a while to get fixed. I was like, oh, I'll bring it to your guys' show if, <laughs> you know, I can like come hang out and watch. Yeah, yeah. And um, this is, I think I was maybe a junior in high school or senior. And all of their shows were like 21 and over. <laughs> and so I was like, oh man, if That's I could so like, cool. yeah. So I was so stoked I did that. Um, 
for about a year, I think. And uh, I just became close with them. And then, um, and then, uh, yeah, I just, uh, well, I ended up getting kicked out of school. And um, I remember calling them and being like, oh, man, I need to, like, get some gigs and, like, figure out what I'm going to do with my life. And um, at that time, they were recording their second album. And um, they're like, oh, why don't you just come into the studio and, and try out um, playing keys? And, um, and what was cool is I n- never played reggae keyboards until that day in the studio with them. And they pretty much told me what to do. And um, I, of course, was uh, playing piano, you know, growing up, but never reggae. And mm-hmm. so it was really interesting. I, I learned, like, on that album. How Seems that- like you're a quick learner. That's <laughs> kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you, you. I mean, you. You had the foundation of mm. like instruments, but like to change your style, and then you know, with Hawaiian, you just had the foundation of reading the book, and then you, you know, you leveled up. So it seems like you just you learned really quickly. <laughs> but think, that's so funny that you didn't even, you you didn't finish high school, or did, um, did you? Finish I ended high up getting my GED. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so such an interesting life, Brad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I played with them for um, about five years and you know, got to tour and um, yeah, I learned so much from them. Mm-hmm. And um, around, I think, yeah, in 2009, the, um, the, the green, you know, came together and um, that was really cool because, you know, there's four lead singers and, um, you know, their, their other bands had broken up had Mm -hmm. stopped playing and so they decided to like come together and form something new and um you know i was asked to come and play bass and and help produce the music in the studio um me and uh leslie um the drummer at that time Mm -hmm. and it was just so fun like i remember going into the studio and just trying out new ideas and you know some of it maybe a little like off the wall but you know we were just like in there having fun and it was like a very memorable process i think you yeah know? the inception of it right it was mm-hmm. just like you guys probably didn't expect it to be what it is today right yeah i mean the cool thing is back then it's like you have nothing to prove mm-hmm. you know you just like go in with a pretty like open mind and mm-hmm. like oh that's cool let's do that <laughs> like you know and I think um, little did you know, you guys are forming the <laughs> Avengers of music, <laughs> of local <laughs> Hawaii music. <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> I mean, it is cool because everybody has come in. You know, um, it's almost everybody's like second band or third mm-hmm. band. You know, and um, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun, and I've been with them ever since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you guys have been killing it. <laughs> I think. I mean, I. It's safe to say, I, I'm pretty sure it's probably one of the most popular bands out of of, a, of all time. Wow. I mean, I don't know what the, the analytics are, or the <laughs> accolades are, but people, everybody knows the green. Everybody knows the green. People not from here know, know the green. Mm. You know, I know so many people that go to college away and their friends know the green. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, you guys are, are amazing. So, oh, yeah. Thank you. Keep it up and... Uh, I, I got to ask you, because I know you're a songwriter. Mm. Which of the songs have you written? Are you guys allowed to share that? Is oh, it a yeah. secret secret? <laughs> um, the last one I wrote was uh, Coming Home. I wrote... That's one of my favorite ones. No way. <laughs> so, That's so crazy. Um, yeah. So That's I a beautiful had the, song. Everybody go oh, check it out you. right now. <laughs> go, well, the music video is so cool, too. It's just oh, so sweet. Yeah. It's just such a sweet song. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a true like story. Um, I wrote the verse first, mm-hmm. uh, which was um, you know just from seeing all my bandmates on the bus, like talking to their kids on mm-hmm. Facetime, you know, and um, and then um, I remember I shared the song with Caleb, and he wrote the second verse, and um, I think on my way to the studio was when I wrote the third verse, like Makaola Hawaii too. Mm. And I, oh yeah, yeah. I really started thinking about yeah, cool, cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just kind of came to me. And I remember like sending it to um, one of my kumu and be like, "Hey, is this okay?" And mm. um, yeah, so so that song, um, she was the best. I uh, wrote with Caleb. That oh one's wow, about Another my dog. <laughs> banger. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, and uh, I've wrote a few others too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dang. That was so funny because I, I knew I was going to ask you this question. And uh, recently I've been listening to Coming Home a lot. Oh. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, because the, the, uh, most of the band members have kids or mm -hmm. all of them except you? Yep. Everybody yeah. Except and me. then it's about like coming home to their kids yeah. and their face. <laughs> I was like, guarantee Brad wrote that. <laughs> Just the irony of it all. Yeah. <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It It is interesting. I I don't know. It just, that was the inspiration. Yeah. You know? No, I totally get it because I've written a lot of poems and I've written songs growing up too for my other friends. But uh, early on when I was growing up, um, before maybe like my peak adulthood, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm still in my peak adulthood. I don't know. But <laughs> just like from my teens to like early adult, I guess, mm. uh, I would write from the perspective of others, like barely oh. anything I would write would be about myself personally. You know, mm. it's what I observed in all my friends, you know, like I would write about like relationship, love stuff, but I was like, I, and I wasn't even in love. I wasn't even in a relationship. Oh. It's just what I saw in like everybody else, you know? That's so interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. So is that, that's kind of like the inspiration that you get to is like you just observe other people or where does it come from? Like it really personal depends. Personal experience? Yeah, I feel like most of it has to be personal. I've, um, I don't know. It's always been different. Like I, I can try and put myself in a mindset and, you know, write a song. And I have before. Um, but I think most of my songs have just, you know, it's just been an inspiration that's come to me um, mm -hmm. by, you know, something in my life or something I've seen. And I think you know, most songs have been like that. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I, I was working with Kimmy in the studio and she's an amazing songwriter because I think um, she gets inspired by so many things. And I think she can really put herself in like different mindsets mm -hmm. with different perspectives and, Writing music with her has been like really cool and and uh, mind opening too. Yeah. And um, we just did a song that um, is on our Christmas album, which I think is coming out as like a deluxe thing mm. this Christmas. But that song is called Christmas in Hawaii, and um, it was cool because I just kind of shot her like a basic idea of of that song, and she. Um, kind of like really worked it out and mm. turned it into like this really amazing song and um that oh, was really cool I can't wait to hear it yeah <laughs> is that maybe i have i've heard it already how does that one go it's like um christmas in hawaii maybe i saw a clip she posted mm. sounds familiar yeah yeah so so what is your writing process like do you just um, lock yourself in a dark room and just <laughs> meditate. Uh, no, you just write a bunch. Start with just writing random words. Like, well, what is it? <laughs> it's always different, mm -hmm. honestly. Sometimes I'll hear like the music of a song first, and then I'll end up writing lyrics later. Or other times it'll be like, you know, words that come. Like sometimes it's in the shower, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's cool, and like, and it comes with a melody. It's like mm -hmm. words in a melody, and then I'm like crap, I got to go record this before I forget mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, write it in your notes? Are you a handwritten um, guy? I usually do voice notes because oh, okay. if there's a melody, like usually if I forget it, I forget it. Mm. And yeah. So you try to <laughs> sing it like how you imagine it in your head. Mm -hmm. And then you just put that on paper and you share it with people. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's cool. Have you ever thought about ghostwriting? Oh. Like, you know, a lot of uh, big, big... Um, uh, was it musicians you know like mm. they, i don't know who they say drake or i don't know somebody like i don't know i'm just throwing that that rapper out like he doesn't <laughs> write his songs or the raps oh stuff like yeah. that um i mean it would be cool i think um yeah i don't know i feel in some ways that is what i do with like the green you know i'll write yeah, a song guess, and, yeah. and give it away i guess everybody just probably assumes it's the the lead singer that writes everything right mm, yeah <laughs> yeah but it is interesting because sometimes i'll write something and i'll already like hear a certain person singing mm -hmm. it you know and so that's been really cool that like, yeah i can just be like hey do you like this song mm -hmm. so do you how do you decide who sings what and like what is the arrangement like how, how does that work for the green yeah i'd say like 99 percent of the time if um someone's singing it they wrote it or at least co-wrote it mm. um with the exception maybe 
for songs that I've written and given to like Caleb or uh, mm-hmm. Ikaika, I think is the mm-hmm. only one that's um, sung songs that I've wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, people have like co-wrote. That's the cool thing about the Green too is, um, you know, you're, we're we're able to like co-write songs or like if somebody only wrote a chorus and that's all that like they really um, thought of or that came to them. They like, hey, anybody want to like write verses mm. or something like so that? So it's really collaborative. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and you guys have a great relationship. You guys have been <laughs> in the band for so long. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely like a family at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. Ohana, the green Ohana. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not Josh Green, but. The green, <laughs> the, the good kind green. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> hey, Josh Green, come on the podcast. Let's, let's have a discussion. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what is it about like Hawaiian and uh, Hawaiian music that you that you're drawn to? Ooh, I mean, I guess, I guess it had to have been just like you know the music, the way it made me feel the melodies, the harmonies. Cause you know, back then when it I was that's all I was playing and listening to, I didn't really know what the songs were about. I could read the translations and stuff and be like, oh, you know, that's cool. But honestly it was it was the melodies, you know, hearing it on the radio, being like, oh my God. And singing along, mm-hmm. not knowing what I was yeah, singing, yeah. you know, I think that's a common story for a lot of people here. And so um yeah, I think it that's what it was. And and now that I can like, you know, listen to a song and like pick apart um mm-hmm. you know, what it's saying and it's it's really cool. It's opened up like a whole another world to um how I listen to music, Hawaiian mm-hmm. music. Definitely. Yeah. It's so cool when you can hear a song in another language language and understand it because mm-hmm. it, it hits differently. Like yeah. Uh, I I remember uh, I went to the Ola Hilo, you guys mm. were there. Oh yeah, um, yeah. and as Kaikana, Paulo was there. Right. But uh, Kaikana was the main uh, performer over there, and he he was singing He Kanaka, mm. and uh, oh, just like I'm when you know Aole Ao Herasa no Hawaii He Kanaka no Hawaii, and then he's mm. like, oh, normalize Ola Hawaii. I think you, I don't mm. know if you guys left by then already, but mm. he was just shouting that like Ola Mauko Lelo Hawaii, and singing those uh, those lyrics in in Hawaiian. I was like. Oh, if everybody could just understand what he was saying, yeah, and how much pride I'm feeling right now, <laughs> like the the feeling, the overwhelming feeling of just like Hawaii that like was yeah. just coursing through through my veins when he was mm. saying that it was like the coolest thing ever, and I was just, like, <laughs> singing the words but actually understanding it right. and like feeling like it was going right to my heart. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I wish everybody <laughs> could just feel this feeling. I know, yeah. right? It's um so great what he's doing and Ikaaka too. Mm-hmm. You know, they're um writing Maka Olala Hawaii yeah. in you know, reggae songs and I I love it. It's yeah. so great. Kinda yeah. continuing the legacy that Sudden Rush started, mm-hmm. yeah. And um Aipohaku. Aipohaku, yeah, yeah. yeah. He um Poki'i was uh, a teacher at our our um, Hawaiian immersion school. Oh, nice! Yeah, I remember. I I think I sat in with them one time, like way back in the day on on keys, I think, mm-hmm. and um, you know, was jamming their songs. And at that point, I like thought nothing of what they were saying. I yeah, was like, oh, yeah, the song's cool. <laughs> it has a cool beat. Cool yeah. Melody, yeah, but um, you know, that's the kind of things I think I just wish I paid attention to mm. back then. Yeah, because even when you you hear the song Kukiya. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that the the lyrics are so good. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite, I guess, underground songs. I mean, mm. I guess it's it's popular among a certain group of people. Yeah, yeah. but it's not like a mainstream, mm-hmm. popular Hawaiian song. Yeah, yeah. That one, that was a good one. Huki, yeah. That that song always gets me going. Yeah. Certain <laughs> Hawaiian songs are just like, yeah. oh, it, it always gets you going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I want to get into Instagram questions right now because mm. uh, I, I want to talk more about some Olo uh, Hawaii stuff in the second half of the podcast. Yeah. So I got a, I got a bunch over here, okay? I'm so glad people asked me. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have one from our friend uh, P Funk Love, too. I'll, oh. ask it, I'll ask that one right now. Hey, after. that's not fair. <laughs> Ka, the first one comes from Kaja Ku. 
this person wants to know, how did you make so much connections in the music industry at such a young age? Mm. Um, I honestly think a lot of it was playing with Ookla mm -hmm. because when I joined Ookla, they were about 10 years older than me. I had looked up to them so much and um, they were already like very established. So I think the fact that, you know, I was brought in, like I was a kid, I, I was 18 years old. And I think that gave me like some cred. And Street I'm, cred. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm so thankful for that because um, it opened a lot of doors, you know. At one point I was playing with like, I don't know, maybe four or five bands and just like sitting in and um i honestly think uh it just helped me so much in that um you know and the music scene here is small a lot of people you know we all kind of know each other mm -hmm. and um yeah i think um just starting from back then i think that's what really helped me yeah shout out to ukla yeah <laughs> and the mock <laughs> <laughs> shout out to ukla the mock <laughs> okay P Funk Love wants to know who is the coolest baby you know. <laughs> it's an inside joke for oh. those who don't know, but you can explain what the inside joke is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm like not the biggest fan of kids. It's not that I don't like them. It's just I, I don't know. I I feel awkward around them. I think. <laughs> so what yeah. do I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> it, um. I think. Uh, well, because I'm an only child too, mm. so I just always, you know. I don't know. Yeah, you just used to being on your own. <laughs> so um, it was funny because I think when I met your family, we went out to dinner and um, Kani. My, yeah, right? Micah and Le, my brother Micah, his wife Le, and their daughter Kani. Yeah. She's two years old right now. And she was super cool. And I was like, oh, this is a pretty cool baby. And um, so we were just joking about that. And, <laughs> uh, and it's, it's super cute because she's like uh, bilingual, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so I don't know. It, it, I think she was like going back and forth between both and like mm -hmm. I was like oh my god that's so cute and yeah, yeah Kenny's so. the best she's yeah. <laughs> so akamai so smart mm -hmm. she just uh, like she, she she'll do like ekahi lua kolu ha lima ono hiku valu eva umi and then she'll be like one two three <laughs> four five six nine ten <laughs> it's so <laughs> cute and then she'll she'll say certain words in Hawaiian Mm. Uh, just like vai and like mea ai and oh, yeah. certain like basic words and she understands I only speak Hawaiian to her mm -hmm. um, but I remember one time uh, she was with my friends uh, we were at our friends one of my friends house in Hilo and so my friend's um, wife uh, she was carrying her and then she was like ilalo 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh um, hey uh, she's saying down <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to be carried right now. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, but it, it's so cool because that's that's how it should be done. You know, when you're a baby, that's when mm -hmm. your your brain is just a sponge. Oh, and basically, yeah. you just you, you just mimic things. Right. You mimic you. You know, you you figure out what this is. What you know what this is. So if you mm -hmm. if I'm saying vi for water, vi, they're gonna start saying water. I mean, they're gonna start saying vi yeah. instead of water, right? And then mm -hmm. they but they start to think, okay, so this is the word for this liquid. It's Vai, you yeah. know, and then English is is everywhere, you know. Right, you're gonna eventually <laughs> learn English if you live in an English speaking country. It's so true. You know, you're not gonna learn Hawaiian if you don't speak Hawaiian, especially here in Hawaii. Right. Yeah. That's why I think kids like Kani, you know, and and you growing up at home um, with uh, Hawaiian speaking parents and just like having that community and foundation mm -hmm. is like. What's gonna normalize the language and really Definitely. bring it back? Yeah. yeah, I mean the goal is to you know speak to my kids in Hawaiian, have their kids speak Hawaiian as well, and just continue this you know generational knowledge. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 still new. You know, we're only about fifty years into the the resurgence of Hawaiian mm. Hawaiian language. So. Yeah. yeah, like we said, imagine what it's going to look like in a hundred years. I know. Yeah. I want to be able to go into like a restaurant <laughs> and that's, you know. It just uh, Oh, that'd be cool if you could go into an only Olelo Hawaii restaurant, right? They come mm. in, they take your order in Olelo Hawaii. Yeah. I know at the, um, they, they've been doing, Hawaii has been doing a lot of cool things to incorporate Olelo Hawaii. Mm. The, some of the bank machines, I know, I think Bank of Hawaii. 
has a Hawaiian language option. Oh no way! Yeah, so when I when I go into uh, Costco and I my grandma at, um likes to uh, give me her card and tell me to take out money for her over there, mm. and that bank that that bank ATM has a, a Hawaiian language option. Oh wow, that's so cool! Yeah. Yeah. And even certain things like uh, bathroom signs, like they say kane, wahine, right. small things like that. I th- I think that's that's how how we have to do it. You know, just mm-hmm. these small little things just to get just so people start seeing it, right? Yeah, they're just definitely. like you know, because we know what a trash can is, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, we know it's a trash can, but when we see like kini opala, mm-hmm. you know, they're like, oh, so that must be the word for trash, right? Can, There's know? no second guessing. That. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> It's cool to see what the the steps that you know the, the state is taking for this. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's big. I'm excited. All right. Um, do you want to have any kids? <laughs> I'm gonna guess no. Um, um, I've always felt like if I did, that'd be cool. But mm-hmm. I've never been on a mission to yeah have kids. Yeah, yeah. you can just steal honey <laughs> for a weekend or something. <laughs> but after that, you'll probably be like, no, I don't want a kid. <laughs> nope, too much work. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What it about does, pets? Pets. Um, I used to have a dog growing mm-hmm. up, but um, yeah, none right now. It's mm-hmm. kind of been I've kind of been traveling yeah. quite a bit, so having any pets mm. just kind of is it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Plant. You could have a plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get a uh, practice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lucky I live Hawaii. This comes from one of our Patreon supporters, Neil. Mm. Shout out to you, Neil. Who was your musical inspiration growing up? Ooh, gosh, there's so many. I think when I was really young, I remember going and watching. Um, my parents would always take me to Sea Life Park and mm-hmm. watch the, um, they would have Hawaiian music, I think, on the weekends. Oh, and no so I used to love um, the Peter Moon band, which had like uh, Peter Moon and Martin Pahinui, Gabby Pahinui's son. And I was just in love with that band. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, Pandanas Club, they were another. Never heard of them. Um, it was like Ken Makuakane, and um, they went through a few different formations. Mm. But yeah, I loved their music. Um, Kao Creator Boys. Classic. Yep. And mm. um, yeah, I would all see, see all of them at Sea Life Park. Mm. It was so cool. And then um, later on in life, um, I think around middle school, you know, reggae got really popular and you know, the Hawaiian music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's when you know the shift really happened for me. And mm-hmm. um, instead of jamming like Hawaiian music at school after school, you know, we started playing more reggae and that yeah. kind of stuff. And um, you got pretty rootsy too, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. like Mike Love and oh yeah, used to play with him. Yeah, we had a band mm-hmm. called Melodious Solutions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. Mike Tavana and. Um, Sam and me and yeah. yeah and so yeah they you know loved Roots too so mm-hmm. they showed me a lot of like cool artists mm-hmm. and um, I think yeah back then I loved reggae even the local groups like Ukla, um, Humble Soul I definitely remember listening to a lot of mm-hmm. um, Humble Soul back then yeah and um, yeah Bob Marley <laughs> yeah my, my brother Micah would tell me about the times where he used to uh, watch Mike Love and Paula mm. together. What what is the band they call? They, they were in them? a band called uh, Dub Conscious. Dub Conscious, yeah. and that's like that was super rootsy music, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, he would t- he would tell me, "Come on, you don't even know." Like back <laughs> in the day, like oh, this. I used to watch Mike Love at Tropics all the yeah. time <laughs> before he was even big. You even heard of Dub Conscious, but you don't even know music if you never heard Dub Conscious. Micah's guaranteed listening to this right now, so that's my Micah voice. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, so our uh, next question. Underscore Huapala underscore wants to know, any solo music coming out? OG, B-Dub, like Crystal, <laughs> still? Oh, man. I don't know. Once in a great while, I'll like feel like singing again, and you know maybe I will one day. But I feel like I've lost so much connection with those old songs that I've written. Mm-hmm. It was it just seemed like a different life in in some ways, and um, yeah, I don't know if I would ever really want to sing those songs again. Um, you know, maybe writing new songs. Um, but then again, like all the new songs that I've written 
over the past few years, I've, you know, never really heard myself singing. I've always like, you know, given them away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a different point in your life, right? I think we all go through phases in life, you know, where something is a little bit more meaningful at this time, you know, where mm. right now where we're at in the present time, it's just different, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And th different things inspire you, you know? You're mm -hmm. motivated by different things. And I think that's okay, you know, just kind of respecting the past, but like loving being in the present. Right. Presence. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, so maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> follow him on Instagram <laughs> and you'll see. <laughs> All right. Last question comes from creations underscore by underscore Hana Keppa. What's his favorite Hawaiian song? Ooh. <coughs> no paki ki no. <laughs> it's a hard question. <laughs> hmm. He doesn't uh, know. I'm just going to translate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Aloha nui wau i ke mele o kane ohe um, Kane ohe Oya pa ke kahi mele punahele a u mai ko uva uh, li'i li'i Hoopmana o wau i ka himeni ana i ke la mele ma ke la marawa uh, Na vai um, mm, Po ina wau i ka haku mele uh, Ka mai na oe O lapa ka uila I kane o he. I kome na o, ano kama aina ka ke lo he. It kind of sounds familiar, but I can't remember. I gotta go look it up after this. Mm. Yeah. Ka kane o he. Nui na mele hawa i puna hele a u. <laughs> yeah, there's just a lot. There's, it's hard to choose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. Puni lo wa i ka, ka mele na, um, o a kuana torres, um, mm. na va keros. Oh. Kama aina o i ke la? Oh, na va keros. Um, himeni oe mako lelo Hawaii, ameko o lelo Paniola. Oh, yeah. Hoi it's hoi. This, this one song by Kwana Torres Kahele. Mm. Uh, he sings, it's called Na Vaqueros, it's about the cowboys oh. coming to Hawaii uh, from Spain. And he sings in Hawaiian and he has some words in Spanish, mm. which is super cool. Oh, yeah, yeah that it, is really cool. Yeah, it's one he of my favorite He has some songs. like amazing songs. Yeah. It's so beautiful. You know. Yeah, gotta get him mm -hmm. on one day. Yeah. You gotta go sing sing that song for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So mahalo everybody for leaving those questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest and maybe a question will make it on the podcast. All right. So now I, I want to get into, you know, really deep into the Hawaiian language stuff, you know, the Olelo Hawaii and why it's important for, to us. And I want to mm. ask you, why is it important to speak Hawaiian, you know? And um, if you want, you can answer this in Hawaiian too or... It's, it's up to you, but yeah. Why, why is it important to speak Hawaiian? What's the mm. importance of it? Nui ka vai vai o ka o lalo Hawaii. O e ka o lalo ke ia aina e. Noho kako ma Hawaii. O e ka o lalo ke ia aina. He mea kaumaha noa ale kakoa pau o lalo Hawaii. No laila ina fala au kako ina hiki e ina akamai ika ola lava i a hiki ke fala au he, he me nui ka fala au ana ma vai na ona hoa ilokon o ka ohana ke kahi mm -hmm. yeah. e pono kako na no kako ke kuleana e ho kuluma ika ola lava i e. yeah no kame ina ina aole Kako navai. Eh, oye no. Yeah. Ah, kehele oye Kaliforni, kehele oye New Yorka, kehele oye Ivaho o ke ke ya pai aina. Ale lako e o la lava i aina. Eh. Yeah. O mako vale no. Yeah. Oye no. Kako na hava i pono e ho o mau i ko la lava i e ho o ma hua hua i ka o la lava i. Naila, ay kako o vau i ke la ke la ke la mana o. Nui ka vai vai o ko la lava i. Eh. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah, uh, nui ka vai vai o, o ka kako kuleana e o lelo Hawaii ai. Eh, mm -hmm. oh, you know. Ke hele oe i uh, sepania. Mm. Hea, hea ha kalako lelo. Lelo paniola. <laughs> ke hele oe i uh, kelemania, uh, Germany, yeah? O lelo kele, kelemania lako. Eh. Yeah. No, ke, aka ke 
ke hiki mai na poe i Hawaii. When people come to Hawaii, you know, wouldn't it be cool in a olelo Hawaii na poe? Yeah, if people speak speak Hawaiian. You go to right. Spain, they speak Spanish. You go to Germany, they speak German. I How think there shouldn't be. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. yeah. There shouldn't be any doubt for somebody, like a a visitor, a foreigner coming here, that Hawaii has its own language. You know, mm. I think like, and and that's one of the sad things, or you know, maybe something that um, we're working on, right, is to normalize the language so that you know people that come here know that this place has a, a language, and I think what that does too is it opens up. The history of Hawaii and what happened mm. to the people here, and um, you know, losing the language is almost like helping to forget that fact. You know,、mm, yeah, because we language is everything,、mm-hmm. right? Without language, makolelo keola, you know. No, so it's like if the language disappears, so does the culture, so does the history, so does everything.、Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so important for us to continue the language and. Continue speaking it with others and normalize it. I think that's a word that's thrown out a lot, right?、Mm-hmm. Normalize the language because it's n- it's one thing to speak it. You know, we could speak it at home, but if we're not speaking it out in public, it's not in restaurants, in these um public establishments.、Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, you you're just crossing people at the grocery store in Waikiki, wherever you are, and all you hear is English. You know, you. That、we're gonna lose the language, you know. You don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, this、uh, it it's a huge responsibility,、mm-hmm. definitely. And I'm always surprised too when, like, you know, I'll、um, I'll forget too because I'm so used to, you know, talking in Hawaiian with my friends if we're out and about, and you know, someone will be come up and be like, "Are you guys talking in Hawaiian?" <laughs> and You know, it's it's become a normal thing with you know a certain group of friends for me is you know if we go we go to Ala Moana or go out to eat or anything you know that's our language、mm-hmm. and um you know and someone coming in and saying that it's always you know it's not shocking really anymore but I'm always a little like you know I'm like oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of crazy how little knowledge people have of Hawaii. With the history and the language, because a lot of people, when I would say I speak Hawaiian, they didn't even know Hawaiian's a language.、Mm. They, they had no idea. Right. Yeah. So I mean, th- again, that's a part of our responsibility to educate people. Right. Hawaiian's、yeah. a language. Hawaiian has a history. Hawaii has a history.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it's just、uh, it's a long road ahead, but it's a fun <laughs> one, and it's a and it's a cockle、mm-hmm. thing, right? It's all、Definitely. of us together. So, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for for the future of it.、Um, one one thing that I feel like I still struggle with, and something our dad, my you know my my dad tries to encourage us is speaking Hawaiian amongst each other, amongst、mm. my siblings and other people, because it's so easy to just shift into English, right? Because that's right. what we're used to. You、mm-hmm. know, it's convenient. You know, we it's it's our For majority of us, it's our first language, so it's easy. F- it's it's our best way to express ourselves, right? You know? So, for me and my siblings, you know, we're just like, yeah, we gotta speak Hawaiian to each other, but we never do. <laughs> and then, you know, maybe when we go out in public, it's like a secret language, right?、Mm. Which I don't like. <laughs> I don't like personally. I mean, I love it. I lo- <laughs> see. This is this is where the you know the、I、push know and pull comes because it's like. It's so cool to have a secret language. Nobody knows what you're saying. You know, there's this person being rude. They're like, ah, nani kia kanaka, kia haole, blah blah blah. You know, it's like, whatever. And but I don't like that we're only using it for that. You know. Yeah. And that's the that's where the that struggle comes from. Right. Right. And what's funny about that too is nowadays. Because it is becoming more normalized, you never know who <laughs> speaks. Who knows,、yeah. So you could, you know, be talking maybe about somebody, and then、yeah. somebody else could actually, you know, <laughs> yeah, or somebody that you think doesn't speak the language, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of like people who don't look Hawaiian that、mm-hmm. can speak Hawaiian, you know,、well, like me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I would never guess. <laughs> Even going up, going to my school, there's this.、Um, I had a couple classmates that, or a couple people in school that, you know, just. 
super fair skin. You would never mm. think they uh, they speak Hawaiian. There's one family that Navajo Colonial Pool. There's redheads. Oh, speak perfect Hawaiian. Mm. You know, you you just never know. But right. um, but that that's that's the cool thing about um, you know learning Hawaiian too is like anybody can do it as long yeah. as you have the right intention and you know you you do want to learn and actually perpetuate the language. Right. Yeah, I just would so. hate for people to to learn it just as a party trick. Yeah, mm. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like that's not the right intention. Yeah. yeah, you know people who maybe they're off in college and they don't really speak Hawaiian, but you know they're trying to impress their friends over there. <laughs> like I said, you just say all the Hawaiian street names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh yeah, I speak Hawaiian. <laughs> they're never gonna know, right? Right. Yeah, as a joke, right. it's fine. But if you're actually mm. doing that seriously, then aole. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Definitely. Yeah. What do you do? You struggle with that too? Just like. Like you know, you should speak Hawaiian to certain people, but then you're just like, it feels weird if you're only speaking Hawaiian, or like when you're you're thinking like, oh, should I speak English, or when do I speak English? Like, we started speaking only Hawaiian because like even when we we right. speak, I'm just like, okay, when should I transition to English, or when should I speak in Hawaiian? Should we just only speak in Hawaiian? Mm. So yeah, it, it's confusing yeah, yeah. sometimes. I think it it does take an effort, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Sometimes I have certain friends that I've actually made more recently and it's because of, you know, we can both speak Hawaiian. And I think it's those relationships where we only we only speak um, Hawaiian, which is great. I love that, you know, and even between us, I feel like the majority has been that way. I think it was only um, a couple of times when, you know, to make sure things were like absolutely clear that we switched. Yeah. Um, I think uh, what I've noticed too, though, is if I'm with people that don't speak and um, there's one person that I am used to, you know, only speaking with in Hawaiian, then I'll just speak in English because I feel like it's kind of rude to the people around. Yeah, I and agree. I think um, a cool example has been Paula. So for a while when, when I was learning, she was mm -hmm. my only friend that I would talk to mm -hmm. that I was comfortable with, like talking with and I think at that time I was talking like super slow <laughs> like <laughs> and it was super basic like I remember um I was learning and then the green one on tour and um I remember calling her like almost every day and just saying super simple stuff like oh I am a coma kaliponi <laughs> e hele ka hokele <laughs> like stuff like that and it was just you know to try and like stay in it while I was traveling mm -hmm. and um and I think at that time too, I think Ho'o was helping me. So I would call Ho'o too and ask questions. And, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, Paula was like one of my only friends that could, could speak. And, um, and so I would, I think I was making a huge effort to only talk to her, you know, mm -hmm. Hawaii back in those days. And now it's almost the opposite. I think, um, I have a lot of friends that speak and, with Paula, I feel like I'm always in situations where we have other people around. Mm -hmm. So we end up just talking in English. Mm -hmm. It's that. And I feel like I just don't make the effort yeah. anymore. Yeah. I guess at the end of the day, it does come down to effort. But in those social situations, like when there's other people that don't understand, I do mm -hmm. usually revert to English because I don't want to like have feel, have them feel left out. Yeah. 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 But it, in a, and then there's another side of that is like, okay, what, why... Do we have to be inconvenienced because you don't understand our language, right? Yeah. There's that side of it too, but I mean, the world we live in, English is dominant. So mm -hmm. that's just it's, it. Is, that's just what it is. <laughs> it's you know? a tough situation, yeah. I think. You know, and yeah, yeah. We we'll just we'll keep figuring <laughs> it out. <laughs> we'll just do what comes, what feels natural. But I guess speaking Hawaiian first feels unnatural. So in, in a sense, you have to kind of. Mm step outside your comfort zone oh. in a sense even though maybe you're comfortable speaking Hawaiian but maybe you're not comfortable speaking Hawaiian in certain situations mm. it's so this everything is so confusing Brad <laughs> I don't know what to do uh, I, know. I don't have the answers I'm not speaking like I have the answers I'm just creating dialogue right now because I'm searching for the answers I think you know it it you're right. I think it's just making the effort and I think you know the more effort everybody puts in the, the better and mm. um you know, that'll make it easier, right? If mm -hmm. you know your friend can understand, then, you know, yeah. you should make the effort. 
Yeah, yeah and try just like throw out Hawaiian words every now and then, teach mm-hmm. them a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a critic. Right. Because you know, that's going to discourage people, you know, if you're just super like correcting everything they say. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's necessary, but fill mm-hmm. it out, you know. If right. they're saying Honolulu, then definitely. <laughs> or Kuleana. Yeah. <laughs> then, okay, yeah, just, just correct them. <laughs> like, you don't want to <laughs> say it like that. <laughs> right. We're going to look at you weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to do it without, like, putting them down or making yeah, them, like, yeah, discouraged. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, not like, oh, why would you say it like that? You know? <laughs> like, okay. Maybe that's not the best way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, are your, what are your top words that people mispronounce that annoy you? Um, I'm going to say... Pokey, Pokey, yeah. <laughs> and um, Kaneohi. Kaneohi, yeah, that's a classic. One. I was right about to say that. Yeah, it's Poke. Everybody, repeat after me. Poke, not Pokey, not Pokemon. <laughs> Actually, it's closer than to Pokemon than it yeah. is to like Hokey Pokey. I know. So Poke, and it's Kaneohi, <laughs> not Kaneohi. Yeah, my my top one is Kaneohi is a classic one. I hear people say it all the time. Mm. Uh, Kuliana. Oh, you yeah. know, Kuleana responsibility and Honolulu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe back in the day, people say Honolulu. I don't know. But mm. to me, I just Honolulu. Yeah. <laughs> Honolulu, people. Okay. So it's everybody, Jordan, cut this clip off. Where am I looking at? <laughs> it's Honolulu, you know? What does Santa Claus say? Ho, ho, ho. Mm. You know? Ho. He doesn't say <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You know? Honolulu, not Honolulu. Okay, people? <laughs> Honolulu. All right, repeat after me. Honolulu. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then Kuleana, Kulean, not Kuleana. I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones. I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, what are some of the, the words that people say that I don't like? Mm. Yeah. I think um, ukulele is another Ooh, one. Ukulele, yeah. yeah. Ukulele. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ukulele. Ukulele. Not ukulele. Yeah. yeah, but you know what's funny is I mean it's not really people's faults too. It's because like yeah, yeah, it becomes exactly. it, the incorrect pronunciation mm-hmm. becomes the normalized one, and yes. then that's what we grow up. And who knows what the heck I was saying before I learned? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I don't yeah. even know. That's a, that's a very good point. <laughs> uh, something I've thought about before, and uh, definitely just ignore as I'm going through these rants. <laughs> Is that you know? That's just that's what you hear, right? You you grew mm-hmm. up saying here in Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. You believe it's Hawaii, right? right? And that's not your fault, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's. I don't I don't want to say it's not your fault for being ignorant, but that's just how we were taught, you know. If like for for example, we grew up here in Hawaii with a big influence in pigeon, pigeon language, you know. Mm-hmm. When 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 I say my number, I go one, two, three, <laughs> you know, not three, mm. you know, and maybe maybe people are going to look at that weird, like, why is he saying one, two, a tree that grows <laughs> out of the ground, <laughs> you know, but that's just, that's just what we, we, we were taught, taught, right. taught, <laughs> thought, taught, taught, off the THs and TAs that, that messes me up. <laughs> that's what we were taught. Thought, not after thought, thought. <laughs> that English is hard too, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I mean, um, somebody brought up a good point to me um, and they were saying like, you know, why are people so critical about like Hawaiian grammar and speaking perfectly when we don't always speak perfect English, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh man, that's so true. <laughs> yep. I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> you can go back on every podcast and guarantee there's a, a mispronunciation, a right. grammar mistake. <laughs> I use is or are incorrectly. <laughs> and it's human. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like natural. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's just what language is. <laughs> but like you said early on, it's all about is if you can understand somebody. If mm-hmm. you can get the gist of it, you know, you don't always have to correct people, you know. You say right. you mispronounce something, you, you know, say a plural or singular wrong, but you know what they're saying. Right. You know? And that's right. that's the, the biggest thing. If you know what they're saying, mm-hmm. that's that's how you communicate. That's how we communicate as humans. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even need words to communicate. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I'm yeah. hungry, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just like, yeah, you see somebody mm-hmm. nodding off. You don't have to be like, Oh, are you tired? 
right. the person's obviously tired. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. So also intuition, just observing things, all that. Okay, but all right, uh, speaking of people learning, what is some advice that um, you have for someone trying to learn Hawaiian? Um, I think just try to immerse yourself as much as possible, which um, I think you said it's it's hard unless, you know, maybe Hilo is that community, you know, where... Yeah, it, you do hear it spoken more in Hilo. Yeah, um, but otherwise just, you know, read, write, and listen, and, um, and speak. I think... I really wish that when I was first reading um, those books that I said everything out loud because I think it held me back in some ways where like I was good at texting people and doing that kind of stuff. Um, but when it came to like having a conversation and, you know, doing that kind of mm -hmm. thing, my uh, comprehension for like listening and, um, and being able to reply was like way behind. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. So that was one thing I wish I did was try to talk more in the beginning and, you know, not be so shy and afraid of making those mistakes. Yeah, I, um, I think it's like a muscle, right? And like you, you mm -hmm. have to practice it. You, you, your mouth is forming new words and like saying things differently. So if you don't practice enunciating and pronouncing different words in Hawaiian, right? By the time. You, you know, you, you're having a conversation with somebody, it's going to feel weird coming out of your mouth, right? Yeah. Like saying certain A, E, I, O, U. You know, yeah. it's, just, it's different. It is. Yeah. It is. So that's, a, that's a really good point. And um, the, the thing you said about, it seems like there's a more, like more of a community in Hilo. Mm. I, I've had that conversation too, because I always thought like, people, people would say it seems like Hawaiian language is bigger in Hilo. I mean, that there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of the, you know, Hawaiian immersion schools, like some of the most prominent ones, the, the Hawaiian language college is over there, you right. know, just like, that's the OGs over there, you know. <laughs> but I think it's um, it's smaller. I, I feel like there's more Hawaiian language speakers on Oahu. Mm -hmm. It's just way more spread out. And Hilo is just a lot more condensed. Mm -hmm. So it's like easier to find people. It's, you know, mm -hmm. you probably hear it spoken more because it's a smaller community. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think it does happen a lot here, um, but it's just it's there's so many people and we're so spread out. It's you right. don't hear it as often. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I remember when um, I went out to dinner with your brother. He was talking. I think his friend was the waitress, and so they were only talking in um, a little Hawaii. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think at that point they did, I hadn't said anything, and then I think later in the dinner, Paulo was like, "Oh, you know, Brad's like <laughs> Brad speaks," and your brother's like. Oh, I thought we were like, I was being sneaky or something like that. Because <laughs> he didn't say anything bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember my little brother because my little brother was the, um, he, he worked at meals mm -hmm. while you were at dinner with my older brother and his wife. And he was oh, saying, yeah. I remember him saying that, yeah, his, his other friend Kaya also mm -hmm. speaks Hawaiian, so they're speaking Hawaiian. And he's like, oh, yeah. he, I remember he, he really liked that interaction because everybody at the table could speak Hawaiian. Oh, and that's right. really rare because anytime he, he sees people that, or he hears people that speak Hawaiian, he goes up to them and he speaks Hawaiian. Mm. I think that's a really cool thing that brings people together too. It's like, because it's such a small community, is um, if you hear people out in, in, the, in the public speaking it, it's like, you almost want to go up to them and be like, oh, Lelo Hawaii, or like you speak yeah. Hawaiian. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, how did you learn? And, and you just like, Right. You, you want to talk to them because it's so rare. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's uh, for people who maybe um, ever studied abroad uh, in, a, in a place where they don't speak English. It's like everybody's speaking a certain language and then you hear somebody speaking English and you're like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, that person is speaking English. And then you go up to them and be like, where are you from? Like, yeah. you speak English too? It's like that, but for mm -hmm. Hawaiian. <laughs> That actually just happened to me on Maui. Um, we were, we just finished playing and I was walking back to the dressing room and there's like this little corridor where there's like, um, I think people from the audience. And, um, you know, I stopped a couple of times to say hi and take pictures. And then this girl came up to me and she's like, oh, mahalo nui ya oi. And I like stopped and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, and like we had a little conversation. And I think it was literally because of that, you know, mm. it was, and I was like, oh, it was like really nice to meet you. And, you know, and then. That was it. But um, yeah, I think I'm very, I'm like much more inclined to like stop and have a conversation or like 
you know because it, it's interesting you want you almost want to know their backstory a yeah. little bit more because everybody has such different backstories like mm -hmm. not everybody just grew up speaking it like right. i did uh, <laughs> that's actually very rare mm -hmm. um a lot of people learn it in their adulthood or like maybe they started taking classes in high school i mean you learned it as when you were an adult my dad learned it after he graduated high school he's not hawaiian either oh um, but he, did, he looks Hawaiian. he speaks it fluently he started reading the hawaiian bible that's how he he really got oh. into it uh, but yeah, did, everybody has such a unique story mm -hmm. of how they um, started speaking Hawaiian. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think like a good lesson too is it's never too late to start learning. Yeah. Yep. You know. What are some research resources for learning Hawaiian? Um, I think. Um, well, there's so many online now. I think Eho um, Pili Mai is super mm -hmm. funny. Yeah. Um, Kaha, 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 Kahanuola, Kahanuola. Oh, yeah. like him and his mom cracked yeah. me up. That's awesome. um, Maluhia is great too. You know, I think um, I, I love just hearing him talk, and you know, he always has good manao to share too. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot. I think um, one of my friends, they're doing like a lot of skits and stuff. Um, their IG is called Omiki, mm -hmm. and um, they're all from Hilo, I believe. And um, yeah, they were doing stuff maka olal Hawaii. Uh, gosh, what else? I I really um, love the old radio show Kaleo Hawaii. Is it um, on YouTube? Where do you find that? Um, I think it was off of Ulukau. Um, mm, I think okay. you can find That's it. That's a good resource website Ulukau. Yeah, and they just uploaded a bunch of like old uh, Manaleo videos, mm, um, nice. and those are so great. They have like Tuti um, interviewing people. Mm -hmm all these kupuna and yeah i just love watching that and um i think yeah those are great resources and then just like finding your own you know people that yeah you know that maybe speak. learn with a friend yeah. that, that way you can motivate each other totally yeah totally cool yeah. what what do you feel more connected to hawaiian culture or japanese culture i'm curious Ooh, that's tough i mean i think my japanese culture aside from like maybe like new year stuff <laughs> and um maybe like funerals and mm. that kind of stuff that's about it i mean maybe we have some like random customs but mm. um i'm not that connected i think um my great grandparents moved here and so gosh i don't even know what year that was um but yeah i think i've just always felt more connected to um hawaii mm. and i mean i think it was the music you know mm. that really attracted me to the language and to um to everything else um i was never really you know into like the hula and that kind of thing but the music and mm -hmm. singing and playing it um and yeah mm -hmm. i think that was i definitely feel more connected to that i mean growing up here i think you know it's hard not to just love love the culture and the yeah. land Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my dad is, his dad was 100% Japanese, but he didn't grow up with his dad. So oh. he, he always says that he was, um, he was born Japanese, but he was raised by Portuguese. <laughs> so that's why he's the way he is. <laughs> and that's probably why I'm the way I am. Because we, we didn't have too much Japanese culture in our household. It was Hawaiian and uh, just Portuguese talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting. But I mean, I think that's a common thing, right? Like, mm -hmm growing up here and and not being um hawaiian by blood mm -hmm. but still having like so much love for this place mm -hmm. and um you know I, I think that's what it comes down to is is having love and respect for um the land and the people and and the culture and you know i don't want to say like knowing your place but i think you know i definitely feel like i don't have what's the right way to phrase this like i wouldn't really try to involve myself with things that are like native hawaiian mm, i guess like native some, hawaiian issues like very r deeply rooted issues yeah like systemic things i feel like that's just not my place mm -hmm. you know and um but i don't know yeah well i me. i think just you being an advocate for the hawaiian language is doing a huge part for the Hawaiian community. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not Hawaiian by Coco, right? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, people can look at you as like a, 
somebody who is, you know, who perpetuates the language, the culture, just by doing that. And I think we need those people, you know, because mm. there are some people who are Hawaiian by blood that don't do anything Hawaiian, mm. you know, or maybe they just don't grow up with their culture, you know, it's, you can't blame them for that. You know, maybe they grew right. up in Las Vegas because their parents mm. had to move away because it's too expensive to live here. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just everybody has a unique situation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So that, that's super interesting. Um, uh, I want to know a little bit about uh, the tour life because you're, you, mm. you're, you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that like? How do you not get so tired or do you just get tired you <laughs> I do and it, you drink a lot of energy <laughs> drinks like what's that like um I definitely try and stay healthy on the road I think um we're all older now so things are pretty mellow mm -hmm. for the most part our bus is like fairly quiet <laughs> after the show um <laughs> everyone's just dead up. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know things have mellowed out a lot I think I think it in a good way because I think if you know I think that's how people burn out mm. just on the road and you know you get sick and yeah, that's yeah. never good but i mean touring has been really fun um i think i've been lucky to tour with like a bunch of different people and get to experience it and um i think one of the coolest tours the green did was a uh, warp tour which went to almost every state wow. and um and uh i just pretty much got to see all of america and um, it was like the most grueling tour. It was over two imagine. months. And yeah, we we're just and like, probably a new place every day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you're driving like all night to get to the next place. And yeah, you guys have your own places to sleep or. Yeah. So the bus has uh, 12 bunks. Oh, OK. Nice. Yep. Yeah. That's so awesome. It's pretty comfy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what uh, what what was your favorite state during that whole trip? Mm. What do you think is a really cool state to visit? Well, in general, one of my favorite places is uh, New York. Mm -hmm. I love um, just visiting there, going to eat, going shopping. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of my favorite places. And then I think the other one would maybe be San Francisco mm. for the same reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and just, you know, I get to see my friends too, mm -hmm. popping into those places. Um, yeah. Cool. I really love those. Tour life, well, you know, to be able to tour like that, you're you're gonna have to put in a lot of practice to get to that level to, you know, be able mm -hmm. to have that kind of experience. So, what would you tell somebody just starting the music that wants to be a professional like you and you know your bandmates? Mm, definitely practice. Um, I think going out and meeting other musicians, like networking, is big too. Um, you know, and I. If you want to be in a band, then, you know, finding other people who have the same goals and, you know, same um, music style, that's great. You know, you can start your own thing. Um, I think when I was at Punahou, I was in like two different bands. Um, you know, one was a little more like local music, Hawaiian music, and then the other we were playing more like roots reggae and even some like alternative stuff like, mm. you know, Sublime and that nice. kind of stuff. and. And so I just had such a great time in those days, you know, playing the music I love. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think just get out there and do it, practice. Um, the cool thing nowadays is social media, right? We didn't have so that easy back to then. Connect with people. Yeah, or like post videos of your mm -hmm. band and like, you know, you can get popular that way or just become recognizable to where you can get hired and get mm -hmm. gigs and. Yeah. yeah, very true. We live in a digital age. And yeah. <laughs> everything is so accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Okay, so how how does somebody from Hawaii make it in music and you know on a national international scale? Um, or you know, is just being locally famous the goal? Sometimes, like what? Mm, I think. My goal is to, you know, have this be sustainable mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, to keep doing what I love, you know, you know, for the rest of my life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think Hawaii, like in the States, it's, it's amazing because we'll go on, out on tour and there's people from here that have, you know, moved away mm -hmm. for work or for whatever reason. And, 
you know, getting to play music for them and hearing their stories after, you know, sometimes they're just so homesick and yeah. hearing um, our music just kind of brings them back. And so hearing stuff like that is very touching. Um, and then there's places like, you know, Japan where they love hula, Hawaiian music, Hawaiian culture. Mm. And so, you know, getting to play there, it's like, you know, it, that's different too on a different mm. note, but. Yeah. Do you, do you think it's harder for people to make it globally from Hawaii? Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe, um, maybe some of the markets are different, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think you guys broke into the national and international market? Mm, the green yeah the green i think maybe from you know touring and mm. playing with other bands you know because that's the thing is if you go out on tour with another band you're playing for their audience mm. and who knows where like those people are from you know mm -hmm. and so the goal is always like hopefully you made a good impression on them they go out and tell their friends and they come to your show next yeah. time and um and so I think, you know, if you keep doing that and have success at it, then you'll end up having a following in all of those new places. Yeah. And yeah. Do you think people want to make it big or sometimes they're content with just kind of being just playing at a local level? You know, there's a lot of really good mm -hmm. bands, local bands that are popular here in Hawaii, but aren't really popular outside of Hawaii. Right. Um, yeah, I think people have different goals, you know. I think some people like the local scene. Mm -hmm. You know, you can play it at, um, you know, the venues around town, the bars and that kind of stuff. Um, and some people are, like, happy doing that. Um, and then I think there are other bands who, you know, want to travel and are hungry for that kind of uh, maybe a little more adventure outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the cool thing with The Green was when... Um, the Green formed and, you know, put out the first album and started having touring opportunities. Everybody was like hungry for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all about the same age. Mm -hmm. And so I think that made it easy for us to just be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go out and tour for like two months. And who cares? You know, back then we were in a van. <laughs> and um, I remember one tour we had to drive literally from the east coast to the west coast and it was like one of the worst things ever um it was winter and i remember just being free like frozen oh, wow. just freezing in the van yeah and, um you guys came a long way you got you got, you got 12 bucks now <laughs> yeah and probably a good uh insulated van with heat good heating and yeah you won't freeze like that. <laughs> i have a um electric blanket nice, nice. <laughs> was that is that a, one of the life hacks for touring bring an electric blanket yeah <laughs> i think um oh man touring life hacks there's <laughs> there's definitely a lot <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay so what inspires you and keeps you going um I don't know, actually. I think this is just what I love doing, you know? Mm. I think that's what keeps me going. Yeah. I think um, just I love playing music and writing music and being able to share that. And, you know, and I think um, seeing new places, too, that's been very cool, mm -hmm. a part of musician life. Mm -hmm. um, I just got to uh, play music in Japan this past summer. Nice. And um, that was amazing it was cool because um it was playing hawaiian music and i was with um some nihawans who mm. were singing and also doing um lay workshops and so we were only talking in hawaiian in japan oh, and cool. um yeah it was super fun and yeah. getting to play hawaiian music like that's i wish i got to do that more honestly mm. Mm -hmm. maybe later in your in your career you'd just be one of those uncles yeah. with the big with the big bass <laughs> playing only Hawaii music oh yeah that would that would be nice yeah because I mean as much as I love traveling and you know seeing new places I think at some point it would you know I want to like chill at home yeah more. yeah right <laughs> is that from the Ihao your necklace oh yeah yeah the Ihao shows yeah so um yeah it. one of my good friends made it those are expensive 
Yeah, they're so beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Mm. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Got a thing? No, no. Mm. I think uh, something I wish people knew about me. You speak Hawaiian. <laughs> kind of, I feel like that's kind yeah, of Yeah, that, that would be a good one. <laughs> I think, um, you know, maybe from Instagram or, you know, playing with the green, you know, maybe some people know that now. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. Can't think of <laughs> People know you. They know everything about you. There's nothing secret. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm a fairly private person mm -hmm. other than like, you know, what I do and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what I want people to know is out it's there. It's already out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because not, especially when you're in front of a lot of people all the time, like you don't always want everything just shown on social media. It's like, right. you know, unless you're maybe an influencer and you just blog all the time. Or yeah. Maybe that's. <laughs> That's what some people like, but I feel like I'm the opposite, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, I'm very like, I want to just do my own thing. Yeah. And yeah. Are you more introverted or extroverted? I definitely think I'm more introverted. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think being a musician and being on stage and having to like interact, you know, forces me to be extroverted mm -hmm. and, um, and it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I love that too, but I'm definitely fine. Just like chilling at yeah, home. Yeah. <laughs> Right on. Okay. All right. So uh, we're coming to the end of the podcast. And before we end, I got to ask you, what is your life hack? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I was trying to think of what my my life hack was. Um, oh, I know. Uh, drop out of school, join Ukula the Moss. People <laughs> 10 years old, you make choke connections in the music industry and become uh, what, part of one of the greatest bands out of like Easy. <laughs> <laughs> anybody can do it that's a good one yeah. that's a good one <laughs> um i think continuing to learn learn new things um i think that's you know what can keep you going in life and you know keep your mind working um because i feel like you're never too old to learn a new skill i mean there is that saying right you can't teach a mm -hmm. old dog new tricks yeah. but I honestly don't really think that's true. I think um, there's so much knowledge out there. And I think that's, you know, something that keeps you young. It mm -hmm. keeps your mind working. Um, it keeps you having new goals. And um, and it's, I think it's just good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when they say you can't teach old dogs new tricks, maybe they're thinking about like physical tricks, you know? Like <laughs> oh, you yeah. can't teach a, a 20 year old dog to do a backflip. You can't <laughs> teach a 70 year old, 80 year old mm. grandpa or grandma how to do a backflip. So right. maybe it's, they're talking about more of the physical stuff. <laughs> but yeah, as long as I guess you're still pretty cognizant and your mm. brain is healthy, you can yeah. learn. You can always learn. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be like how to surf or. How to do something right. like climb a mountain, whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. rock climb, you know. <laughs> but there are some impressive people who are like, who are old and they, they do a lot of crazy physical things. Mm. It, it's pretty nuts. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome life hack. All right, so I have uh, my last five questions for you. It's just like a rapid fire answer, okay? All right, <laughs> favorite song to play? Um, I'm going to say Nani Kawaii. Nani Kawaii. I don't know if I know that one. Mm. Nani Kawaii. Okay, I gotta look it up. All right, favorite tattoo? Oh. You got some cool tattoos. Um, I honestly think it's this this blackout sleeve that mm -hmm. I have. Um, that one's sick. And it has uh, Japanese kimono patterns mm -hmm. um, in white over the black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you get that one? Um, it just I just finished it actually like maybe a couple months ago. Mm. Yeah, it took like a couple years to do. You did it in Hawaii or you went somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, um, this guy, Stephen Lam, who's an amazing artist, did mm -hmm. it. And he put so much time and effort, so I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. If you guys aren't watching the visual feed, then you can check it out. You can just hold, <laughs> hold it up real quick. Camera. 
Yeah. <laughs> or that one right there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. All right. So favorite plate lunch order. Oh. Mm, well, I don't eat meat. Oh, I mean, you're vegetarian. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm mostly vegan. Um, I don't know if there's a vegan plate lunch kind of place. Then. Or just, I guess, favorite vegan dish. Vegan dish. Mm. Uh, okay. Well, um, Umeke Market up the I'm street just about to say has Umeke, a yeah. very good like Hawaiian plate. <laughs> they do like um, kalua, jackfruit, and cabbage, mm. and they have like amazing um, kalo stew. Yeah, I had that. Yeah. One. And the, they have the the big cinnam cinnabon or oh, cinnamon yep. roll too. Yeah, yeah, that place is mean. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I love that place. Okay, can I ask you why why you cho choose to be vegan? Um. So it happened back when I was playing with Ukla, mm -hmm. like about half of the band was like mm -hmm. vegetarian, pescatarian. And um, I think just from traveling with them and I was just so impressionable, mm -hmm. I think. And I was like, oh, I want to be like that. And <laughs> I looked up to them and yeah, it started with that. Um, I think I was pescatarian during my time with them. Um, and then I just became vegetarian and mm -hmm. now mostly vegan. Is yeah. it hard to be a vegan while touring? Because I feel like you probably don't have too much control over the food that's um, given or provided. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good now. I think, you know, a vegan meal is always requested. Mm. Um, and um, I mean, veganism is like pretty popular now. So mm -hmm. most of the places we play at will have like a restaurant or um, somewhere I can get food from. And, yeah. and honestly, like with Uber Eats now, it's like <laughs> I can get whatever I want. Yeah. And it's it's great. Yeah. But when you go to places with your bandmates, do you always have oh, to like? We honestly don't go out to eat very much together. Oh, okay. Like once in a while, we will, and usually there's like something I can eat. But um, yeah. Mm. Honestly, like tour, a lot of times we'll get in a place and everybody just does their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do do people bring their family with them these days or on tour? Yeah. Um, people will come for like like maybe a few days and that mm. kind of stuff. But um, yeah, usually not for the whole mm. tour. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Last one. Favorite hobby outside of music? Mm. Um, I love like going on walks and jogs and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I try to like do that almost every morning. I'll go to like Kawaii Nui or um, yeah. I think just being outdoors and getting fresh air. Yeah. Do you listen to music while you're doing that or are you just nature sounds? Just nature. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't listen to music very much. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know like what ever? it is. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, I'll like want to listen to a song and I'll, I'll listen to it. And then usually like that'll be that. But um, I think it, it just started like after concerts, I would be tired. And mm. the last thing I really wanted was to listen to music right. on the drive home. And then I started listening when I was learning to... Um, Olelo Hawaii, I started listening to that radio show. And so that's all I would listen to in car rides was them talking, you okay. know? And then, yeah, honestly, now I just don't oh, okay. listen to much. You just listen to the Hawaii Verse podcast, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> that's the exception. Do you, do you ever drive with no music? Oh, yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah. That's Jordan's life hack. Drive with no oh, music. Oh, yeah? Because you can just you think. You, you think about so many different mm -hmm. things. You contemplate life and you get great ideas just from... Being silent, sitting in silence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that's all we have. I, I really cool. enjoyed this conversation. Mahalo so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you Ho for having me. Hopefully one day we'll have a full podcast in Olelo Hawaii once we can hire somebody to do our half-long <laughs> subtitles on, <laughs> on this. But it was, it was super cool. And uh, I'm just so proud of everything you've accomplished, you know, as a local boy from Oahu, from Hawaii. And as an advocate for the Hawaiian language. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mahalo for everything. Do you have anything uh, else to you. add? Um, where can people find you? Um, on my Instagram, BW808, or you can find me at concerts, uh, playing with the green, mm -hmm. or Paula Fuga, or uh, Kimi A. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right on, okay. <laughs> well, mahalo Brad for joining us on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Check us out on hawaiiverse.com, the best place to support local. Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse Podcast. Ahui ho! Mm -hmm.